Post-production elements can be used to add impact and movement to a mix, and in this clip, George demonstrates exactly that. George explains how he shapes a rhythmic pattern at the start of the song, so when the band comes in, the mix hits hard and feels super wide. Check it out and enjoy. I'm gonna solo the post-production so that we can just hear what's going on. Uh, Nick has a photo of my rack. Um, all the post-production in this one is going to the Fatso. The reason why I chose the Fatso uh, for this is specifically for this sound. Whatever I just said was muted. Boom. So the specific sound here that's going on is the reason why I'm using the fat. So it has a really interesting compression circuit where you can have multiple stages of compression happening uh, one after the other. So at the moment, we've got the bus and what's called GP buttons illuminated, which means it's going through a like a really soft compression and a really hard compression in one go. Um, so I'm trying to over accentuate the compression so that I can turn it on and off for you guys so that you can hear what's happening. Because in the Roctagon, I also heard that a lot of people got this sound wrong for the electronic stuff. And I kind of think it's quite important for the song, for the texture of the electronic parts to be right. Okay, so this is game matched. So this is off. And this is on. Now it doesn't sound like it, but that's doing 7 dB of compression on the electronic kit. And this is important because for me, this sounds like cassette tape, like old school, really of the era. And it accentuates basically the chain that's happening before it as well. So for the electronic kit stuff, we've got a huge EQ curve going on, which is designed to refocus where the information is being played. So this sounds like a tennis court, right? <laughs> Without it, it sounds really like tennis ball-y <laughs> on, a, on a, uh, a school court and with the EQ in kind of like taking that upper tech away uh, which makes it sound a bit more I don't know vintagey I have an affinity for warm tape setting on satin 2 it just it works and it's holding everything in place before it gets to the compressor and just making sure that the shape stays consistent so without it you can it's really apparent really strong in this it becomes it's too dynamic and it's too nice it doesn't sound like an old um like uh, uh it doesn't sound like it's come off a boom box it doesn't sound like it's from that era yet so with it on it kind of like pulls it back together and then later i'm going to show you why i've got this happening in the mid only channel so this is mid side eq but it's only happening to the mid channel but we're not going to listen to that just yet but i'll show you why uh scratches i guess i must have just gone off on a tangent with just applying warm tape to everything. I It must have just been a saving grace. What's this one doing? Oh, that's a E... Um, is there automation in place? No. So that does not need to be there. Cool. So we're just making it a bit tighter and a bit brighter. So without that EQ move, it's kind of like ducking underneath. And with it, it kind of like stands up above everything that's going on. These, right, I got it. Right, so the reason why there's a secondary EQ or was, was because at the beginning of the song, I chose to make the scratches mono by bringing down 
the side information only. So this refocused all the attention down to the middle of the beginning of the song so that it ensured that anything that came after sounded immediately wider and more exciting. It's a neat trick. It's so simple and it's free, but it, it works. I don't think, did I do the same on this? I did the same. Yeah, so if we were to hear these side by side, you'd hear it open up, hopefully. It's not super obvious, but the fact that it does move outside of what we're used to means that anything that does do that will sound really cool. So the whole rest of the band, all the drums and all the cymbals are going to sit outside of what... By doing this, we've determined how wide the mix is, and then we've just broken that as soon as the first riff comes in. That's why that works.